Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. We've already looked at the first two parts of this question, so what we're going to do today is look at part three. So we've got a quadratic inequality, and the easiest way to solve this is to sketch the graph of the quadratic. So we're thinking about the curve that we were looking at in part two. So let's just write down what we're looking at here. We've got y equals x squared plus 8x plus 15. So the important thing to look at is the coefficient of x squared. And the important thing about it is its sign. And that's positive so that we know that the quadratic graph will be u-shaped, so it's going to look something like this. And what we're interested in is where it cuts the x-axis. So let's just draw in an x-axis. And really we're not interested in, in where the y-axis is, because what we want to know is where y is greater than zero. So we're interested in the parts of this graph that are above the x-axis. So we can see that if the graph does cut the x-axis, it's going to cut it in, well, it, it could either just touch the x-axis or it could cut it in two points. The other possibility, of course, is that it would be right above the x-axis. But what we want to do now is solve the quadratic. So remember the x-axis is the line y equals zero. So what we want to solve to see where the parabola cuts the x-axis is the equation x squared plus 8x plus 15 is equal to zero. So we're just solving a quadratic. And we can see that because we've only got plus signs, we must have plus signs in the brackets. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 15 and they add up to 8. So it must be 3 and 5. So we've got x plus 3 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. So what we can say is that x is equal to minus 3 and x is equal to minus 5. Remember all we're doing here is finding the points where the parabola cuts the x-axis. So what we've actually done is found that we've got minus 5 here and minus 3 here. But having done that, we can now solve the inequality because we can now see that the parabola is above the x-axis when x is less than minus 5 or when x is greater than negative 3. So the solution to the inequality is that x is less than negative 5 or x is greater than negative 3. So you could check this out. One thing to remember is that in part 2 we've already found the coordinates of the vertex of the curve. Remember there we found that x was equal to negative 4, so that's halfway between negative 3 and negative 5, which uh, is good, and that gave us a negative value for y. You could also try substituting in x is equal to say negative 8 to check that a value less than negative 5 does give you a positive value. And you could try substituting in, well an easy value would be 0, wouldn't it? An easier value that is greater than negative 3. So you can check whatever values you want to, to, to satisfy yourselves that the answer is that x is less than negative 5 or x is greater than negative 3.